everybody welcome back to the channel in this video we're going to cover the library react chart js2 and this is an excellent library for adding charts inside of your react application and i'm over here at the react chart js.github.io landing page and you can see a bunch of different charts that you can utilize with this library and add them inside of your react app so over here you can see there's a bunch of bar charts you can have well, this over here, it could also be a horizontal bar chart. Uh, we also have line charts and some of the more popular charts like donut charts as well as uh, pie charts. And of course, there's more charts. There's, there's, you know, this crazy chart that I don't even understand. There's radar charts, you know, there's and there's also more advanced charts. There's like a chart called crazy chart. And this is this is absolutely crazy. It is true. And so what we're going to do is we're going to learn how we can implement these charts. We're going to be working specifically with one type of chart, but when you learn this chart, you'll be able to apply the lessons learned for almost all of these other charts. So uh, that's why I'm not I'm just not really going to repeat myself. So what we're going to do is we're going to implement this donut chart right over here. And we're going to make it exactly the same as what we have or as what they have in the example. So what they have here are red, blue, yellow, green, purple, orange, and then you can see each color has a number of votes. So you can see here blue has 19, red has 12, you know, and then obviously the percentages of, of, of each particular color is going to be reflective of the value that it has. So you can see here that it looks, it looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and let's implement this. Now, of course, to implement this, what we need to do is create a React application. I, of course, already did this. And once you create your React app, what you need to do, of course, is install the dependencies for React Chart 2. So the first dependency that we need to install is, let's just do a quick clear here. So you need to install, do an npm install, React Chart JS 2. And of course, notice the hyphens over here. So React hyphen Chart JS hyphen 2. And then you also need to install Chart JS. So Chart.js is the actual library. You can actually use this with vanilla JavaScript. And then we're utilizing this library over here. And then we're utilizing it with React. So we need to utilize this right library, React Chart.js too. And what this will do is going to give us a bunch of different chart components that we can utilize. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go inside of my app.js file. I'm going to completely remove everything. Uh, and of course, I need to go ahead and run this and I actually am so to run that of course I'm assuming you guys know this do an npm run start and by the way I already installed the dependencies so I'm not going to install them again so over here we have this blank react application and what we're going to do is we're going to very simply go to our source directory and let's create a new directory called charts and then in here I'm going to create a donut dot js file and i'm going to copy everything inside of the app.js paste it in here let's remove some of this we're going to call this donut chart and then over here we're going to call this donut chart right here and then let's remove this class name is the class name wonky over here as well oh it is what is going on all right, and then over here, let's just, just to see that everything works fine, let's just add an H1 and let's just call this dough, dough nut chart. Save that. And then let's go over here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just gonna say dough nut chart, just so we can auto import it. Oops, nope, not dough nut, dough nut chart. And this auto imports it for us. And then we're just going to go ahead and just put it inside of the main app component. So you can see here we have our donut chart. Now I'm, I'm a little bit zoomed in. You might see something really small like this, but I, I zoom in, of course, just for you guys right here. So you guys can see better. So in here we have our H1. And now what we want to do is we want to add this donut right over here. The donut, where is it? This donut uh, a chart. So how do we do that? Well, in order to do that, what we need to do is we need to import the donut component from React. So from React Chart 2. And notice, of course, the hyphen over here. 
And what you want is the donut component. And of course, there's multiple different components. We got the line, we got the bar, we got the bubble. There's a bunch of different ones that we could utilize. I want to utilize donut. So let's go ahead and say donut. Now in here, we, all we have to do is treat this like a normal component. So we're just going to go ahead and save that in. And now this is just going to cause everything to fail. And the reason for this is because we need to pass in some props. And specifically what we need to pass in is the data props. Because right here, we can't have a, 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 um, a chart without any data. That kind of makes no sense. So what we can do to actually do this is go over here and let's just create a constant called data. Now, of course, in a real application, this might be coming from our server. So we might make, be making some HTTP request and we need to pass that data to the donut. But at the end of the day, the data that we're going to create here is going to have to follow this format. So what we're going to say is data is equal to an object. And what we're going to say is we're going to go ahead and pass the data that we created here as a prop inside of this donut component called data. So this right here is going to be a prop called data and it's going to be right now just an empty object because we specified it over here. Now the first thing that we need to add in our empty object are the labels. So the labels are essentially the things in our chart that we want to uh, display. So of course the labels in this case are, are going to be red, blue, yellow, green, purple, and orange, but they could be other things like they could be, I don't know, you know, maybe the, you know, where you get your viewers on YouTube. So maybe a lot of people are subscribed and they, they look at your channel for, uh, they, they view your videos from, um, uh, from your channel or they actually go ahead and search for a specific topic and then they go ahead and take a look at it. So there's, there's multiple different ways, multiple different labels that we can utilize. In this case, it's gonna be uh, just colors. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have an array here and we're gonna say red, blue, and we're gonna say yellow, and we're gonna say green, purple, and lastly, let's just say orange. Save that. And so now we have our labels. Okay, that's great. So let's just quickly refresh this. And of course, it's still not going to work. Because now what we need to add is the data set. So we have our labels. But now what we need to do is add the data for our labels. And this is going to be an array. Now inside of this array, we're going to specify just one object. And this is going to correspond to the data that we specified over here in our labels. Let me just get rid of this for now and this, why not? Okay, so the first thing that we're going to define is, well, the data. So the data, the data is going to be an array. And the data is, well, as if you go back to the example, in this case, it's going to be like 3, 12, you know, 9, 19, uh, 3, 5, etc. And what we want to do is we want to relate this data to the label that we have specified right over here. Now, in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to add the data in the exact same order. So in this case, let's just say, well, 12, this is the first element in the array, and it's going to correspond to red because this is also the first element in the array. So we're going to say 12, 19, then we're going to say 3, then we're going to say 5, and then we're going to say 2, and then 3. Now this five over here is going to correspond to whatever uh, label is uh, fourth. So over here, I guess one, two, three, four. So right here, green. So now if we were to save this and we were to go back to our app, you can see that, well, it's looking, well, we got something. That's awesome. So we have our label right over here and we have our charts. Now our donut looks relatively ugly. I'm not going to lie. And honestly, it's a little bit too big. So what we can do actually to fix this is we can go to the parent component. And then in here, what we can do is we can have a div. And then we can put our uh, donut inside of this div. And then we can give this a style. And we can say width of maybe like 1000 pixels. And what this is going to do if I were to refresh is make it even bigger. So maybe let's make it 500 pixels. And there we go. 
and you can center it however way you want. So for example, we can also say margin, and we can say something like zero auto, and now we got it right in the center, and it's a little bit smaller. Now, if this is too big, and for, for I don't know, for 99% of your applications, this will be too big, so maybe you can even change it to like something like one over here. All right, or 100 pixels. But for now, we'll just keep it like this. All right, so this is looking really good, except this is, well, it's kind of an ugly thing. I wanna change, I wanna change the colors of this so it can be nice and, and beautiful. Now, in order to do this, this is gonna be exactly the same as the way that we have done it over here. What we can also do is we can specify the background color of each particular part inside of our uh, chart. So over here, what we can say is background color, and this is going to be an array. Now the first background color we can say is red. The second we can say is blue. The third we can say is yellow. And then over here we can say that this is green. And we can say purple. And then lastly, we'll say orange. And these actually have to be real colors, real CSS colors. And these actually are. So this is why this will work. So you can see here that, um, well, this is looking kind of good. You know, well, actually, no, it's looking pretty hideous. But you guys kind of get the point. Uh, to actually make this look a little bit better, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to the... Uh, the chart JS documentation, and I'm going to look at the GitHub source code. And if you ever need, uh, if you ever need to refer to the code, I'm actually kind of copying this code step by step in this tutorial. So what you can do is you can go to this, and I'll have this in the link in the description below. You can go to charts, and you can you can actually see all of the different code for each particular chart. So if you want to implement a crazy chart, for example, you can just take a look at this and see how it is implemented. So if there's something that I didn't cover, or maybe the implementation is a little different, you can always look at the source code, copy it, and then maybe change it the way that you want to. Uh, so let's go back to Donut over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply copy these colors just to make it look a little bit better. So what we can say here is let's copy these colors, get rid of this, and let's save that. And so now you can see here that we got these colors. You can see that the labels are also corresponding with these colors. What's neat is you can actually click on the labels to remove them if you want to. How cool is that? That's just like an additional functionality that we get. All right, awesome. So the next thing is I would like to have some uh, border for each particular section in our chart. So what we can say here very similarly is border color and border color is going to be an array and then in here we're going to supply it with the colors again let's just go over here you can supply it with any other color that you want i'm just going to go ahead and just going to paste these colors in and now you can see that it is looking well a lot better so you can see here it looks a little bit different than the example but you know what you guys get the point and if you're not particularly happy with this color of course you can go ahead and change it yourself and that's pretty much it. Uh, we can also supply it with another piece of information and that is the border width, if that's what we want to do. So border width, and we can give this maybe 10 if you want. Now this is gonna make it really big. Maybe if you wanna make it really small, you would just say something like one. And that looks, well, that actually looks more like the, the app that we had. And that's really, that's pretty much it. This isn't a very difficult thing to do. And actually the way that we have done things with this donut is gonna be very similar to the way that we do things with other, uh, other, um, other charts. So for example, what we can do here, and let's go to the documentation, let's say we want to implement a bar chart. So let's say a vertical bar chart. Let's zoom in here. You can see that the data is actually exactly the same. So over here we have our labels, we have our data sets, we have data, we have background color. So this is exactly the same. This is very, very similar, except the component is different. So let's go over, I always go to the wrong one. Let's go here and let's actually, instead of importing uh, donut, let's import bar. And then here, let's just say bar. Let's save that. 
And if I were to go here, you can see now we have a wonderful bar chart. Isn't that terrific? Now, maybe we want to make this vertical. Well, how would we do that? Well, we can do that by going over here. Look at the documentation. Look what it says. We can actually supply it with some options. So you can see here that it takes the data. So this component takes the data, but it also takes in an options prop. And the options prop, one of them is scales. And over here, we can say that, hey, we want this to be in the Y axis. So what we can do here is just copy this. And let's go here. And over here, we're saying scale, we want to say we want to start in the y axis. So we can go over here. And we can keep that in there. And now if we were to save this, you can see now we got some other configuration. Now let's say that we wanted to make this horizontal. So let's see how they do it here. So in terms of horizontal, there's multiple different options. So you can see here that, uh, you know, the index access we're saying is the Y. And so we can actually just go ahead and let's just copy this. And let's go here. And let's just say that the index axis is Y. And if we were to save this, you can see now we have this horizontal chart. So really the, the main thing that I'm trying to get at is what you want to do is you want to look at this over here to really take, take a good look at exactly what uh, props are needed for your chart. But really most of the time, they're gonna follow this configuration right over here. So the data is gonna be very similar and the options might be a little bit different across different, um, different uh, charts. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, tutorial and I'll see you guys in the next one.